Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the swearing in ceremony of the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy as the 24th Secretary of the Army. Hosted by the Honorable Mark T. Esper, Secretary of Defense. Please stand in place for the arrival of the official party and the singing of the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Esper. Chairman, there's a, um, there's a nameplate right there. You know, I was walking down the hallway, and I said, where is this ceremony? And they said, it's right out these doors. And I said, which doors are you talking about? Of course, the chairman had to say, the same two doors you walked out of the past two years. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good to be back for a visit, at least, uh, if, if you will. And it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be back as well today. So first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we mark this very special occasion to swear on the 24th, Secretary of the Army, my friend, Ryan McCarthy. With us today are members of Ryan's family, his wife, Jennifer. Thanks for standing alongside Ryan throughout this journey, of course, and his daughter, Alexa. Hi, Alexa. <laughs> Who is lucky enough to get off today from school, and you were able to skip art and recess, and what was the third class? Snack and pack. I wish my day was. <laughs> I pray for a day <laughs> with art recess and snack and pack. Also with us are Ryan's uh, in-laws. I guess they did not make it, did they? Oh, they did make it. I'm sorry. Uh, Faust and Ann, uh, his brother-in-law, Darius. Where's Faust and Ann, first of all? Oh, I'm sorry. Good to see you all. His brother-in-law, Darius. Where's Darius? I met you earlier. Back there. Got it. And sister-in-law, Tina. So thank you all for being here today. It's a very, very special day. Now, to say that Ryan's path uh, to office has been unique would be quite an understatement. As far as I can tell, he's the only person to ever hold this position in an acting capacity on two separate occasions. Throughout both of those transition periods, Secretary McCarthy provided the leadership and continuity needed to keep the Army steadily moving forward. And I can assert that as a fact. When he wasn't busy filling in as the acting secretary, Ryan ran much of the day-to-day -day business of the Army for over two years as the service's undersecretary. It was in this capacity that I grew to know him well and witnessed the incredible talent and dedication he brings to the job each and every day. Ryan's passion for Army began over 20 years ago. He is a native son of the Army, having commissioned as an infantry officer in 1997. Following his graduation, from the Virginia Military Institute. His five years of active service, including his time in combat with the 75th Ranger Regiment, helped to shape his understanding of the security challenges we face all around the world. In addition to his time as a soldier, Ryan also served on Capitol Hill, was a special assistant to Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, and spent six years working in the defense industry. His collective experience makes him a great fit 
for this position as he continues to draw on much of what he learned throughout his career to advance the Army's interests while protecting the taxpayers' dollars. Over the past two years, Secretary McCarthy played a part in every major initiative that came out of the Army headquarters. And I can tell you there was more than one occasion that we'd be running to each other in the hallway trying to figure out how to sort out another tangled web that was out there. Whether it was advancing Army reform efforts, traveling to several Army focused 22 cities to open doors to recruiters, or helping to stand up Army Futures Command, Ryan demonstrated a willingness to lead wherever the Army needed him most. Throughout all of his activities, he brings a businesslike focus to our toughest problems and ex executes every plan with the commitment of an Army Ranger. As most of you here personally experienced, this summer was a significant time of transition for the Army as all five, all five of the service's top leadership positions turned over. Having worked alongside Ryan, I can think of no leader who is better prepared or more well suited to assume the duties of Army Secretary following this critical period of change, albeit finally in a permanent capacity this time around. The Army plays a central role in implementing the nation's defense strategy as we refocus the force to meet the challenges of this new era of great power competition. Preparing for the future requires an Army that is organized and trained to conduct multi-domain operations equipped with modern warfighting systems and led by the best leaders our nation has to offer. Secretary McCarthy, along with the Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville. Where are you, General McConville? Oh, there he is over there. Hey, and you got Maria with you? Maria. I picked up the Bo Boston pronunciation by now. And Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston, I saw you over here. There you are. Good to see you. Has the service moving forward rapidly along this path. Having successfully rebuilt much of the readiness that was lost over several years of insufficient budgets, the task now is to modernize the future warfare. I know the Army is hard at work on an updated modernization strategy that will serve as the blueprint for the force needed to fight and win in that environment. As the service continues to advance important reforms, reforms in areas such as acquisition, talent management, and budgeting, I have no doubt the Army will set the standard for the Department of Defense. Perhaps most importantly, Secretary McCarthy is putting the right emphasis on taking care of our people. In our business, we recruit service members, but we retain families. Providing them the quality of life they deserve is not only a matter of values, and it also affects our readiness. Ryan is the right man for the job. Nobody cares more about his people than Ryan McCarthy. Issues such as spousal employment, child care availability, and access to quality housing greatly improve and impact people's decisions to continue to serve. As someone who's endured the hardships of military service, Ryan knows this well, and I'm thankful, thankful for his continued commitment to looking after our soldiers and their families. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you the past few years, to work alongside you, and I look forward to our continued work together. We have much, much to do. This is a great day for the Army and a well-deserved recognition of your abilities. I have complete confidence in you, as does the President of the United States. While the road ahead will not be easy by any means, I know you're up to the task for sure. If you and Jen would now join me up front, it would be an honor to officially swear you in. The United States Army Leadership Award will now be presented to Mr. McCarthy.
Good afternoon and welcome. I'm humbled to be surrounded this group that's represented here today. To my family, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Jennifer and Alexa, you're my light and my purpose. I love you both very much. My parents, David and Kathleen, whose love and support are the reason why I'm standing behind this podium. My sister, Shannon, and my brother-in-law, Chase, thank you for your unconditional love all these years. My in-laws are with us today, Faust and Ann Antonitis. And their story is the embodiment of the American dream. And every time they tell it, I get the chills. They spent six years as refugees living in camps in war-torn Lithuania during World War II and emigrated to the States at the Allies liberated Europe. When Faust says what he's thankful for in his life, he immediately responds with two things, the U.S. Army and the free press, both which saved us from tyranny. Few are more patriotic than they are, and I am thankful for their influence in my life, and of course the blessing to marry their daughter. My brother and sister-in-law are also here, Darius and Tina. Welcome and thank you both for your enduring support and love. Secretary Esper, thank you for hosting this, con uh, this, con this process today and also for your trust and confidence in me. General Milley, thank you for being such a strong teammate and friend all these years. It's been an honor to stand with both of you and Jim McConville in a four-man stack. Speaking of teammates, to my wingman in the chief, Jim McPherson, who's filling the duties of the Under Secretary of the Army, General Joe Martin, Vice Chief, Sergeant Major Grinston, you're exceptionally talented men, and you inspire me daily. To all the other senior OSD officials, thank you for being here, as well as all the Army senior leaders that are here today. Thanks for coming out. A special thanks to the immediate office staff that I work with every day. You're in the trenches with me. You put up with me. I couldn't get through one day in this place without you all. To our forces both here and watching live stream, thank you for your service to the nation. And of course, to our international partners, because America never fights alone. General Saleh al Amari, the chief of the UAE Land Forces, who has served alongside US forces in Afghanistan on multiple occasions, you honor me with your presence. Standing on the stairs of the Pentagon, this building has a sense of urgency in its DNA. The unflinching Indiana, Indiana limestone facade, born on the eve of World War II, bore witness to the nation of the darkest day of the war, endured attacks on our sovereign soil, celebrated fledgling peace, and watched as storm clouds gathered on the horizon. From funding to completion of construction, Led by a legendary Army General Leslie Groves, this building took 18 months, defying bureaucracy and infused with urgency after the Pearl Harbor attacks. Today, the storm clouds gather once more. Our adversaries, unconstrained by a continuing resolution, are investing to rapidly modernize, increase reach and lethality, and ultimately to change the balance of power in the world. Our adversaries hope in earnest that we fail. Coach Bobby Knight of the Indiana Hoosiers once remarked, quote, the key is not the will to win. Everybody has that. It's the will to prepare to win that is important. We must maintain a sense of urgency, negate bureaucracy and dogma, and remain steadfast in our priorities of readiness, modernization, and reform. Every morning I walk up these same set of marbled stairs that some of the nation's most dynamic leaders have walked, dating back eight decades, from George C. Marshall, Colin Powell, Robert Gates, and so many others. They helped to de defend the nation in times of both peace and war. They shaped policy to care for our formations, increase lethality, and fight for budgets. As I assume this post, I promise to continue the fight with the same level of commitment. I walked the hallways, repeating the mantra of a soldier who told me two years ago in Iraq. He said, quote, be the secretary we deserve. And I vow to be just that. We will modernize. We will remain the most lethal fighting force in the world. We will take care of each other as family. We will remain ready. And when called upon, we will win. Thank you, Army Strong, and Beat Navy.
Would Mrs. McCarthy and Alexa please join Secretary McCarthy in front of the flags for the singing of the Army song. March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won and the army goes rolling along then it's high high hey the army's on its way count off the cadence loud and strong for wherever we go you will always know that the army goes rolling along Ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to congratulate Secretary and Mrs. McCarthy in the receiving line. Please follow the directions of the protocol staff. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you.